What's going on you guys and welcome back to a different perspective now I'm pretty sure y'all wasn't expecting to see my face again today hell I wasn't expecting to do another video tonight it's, it's past 10 o'clock and I got other stuff that I was up to but I want to touch back on the video that I uploaded a few hours ago of the the man and woman that were shit testing one another and end up paying the ultimate price right so <laughs> This wouldn't be a different perspective if I didn't add some different perspectives to this conversation. Now, let's go back to it, right? Let's revisit this story. I feel like this story may be fake. <laughs> and I've always felt this way, right? I feel like this story may be fake. And I'll explain why. For someone who is earning six figures a year, if they're not managing their money the right way in order to be able to take a month off from their job or two months off, hell, three months off, take that time off from their job and still be able to afford their cost of living, then they're not doing something right with their money. One thing when I first started studying self-development, um, they used to put a lot of emphasis on being able to have at least three months worth of income in a savings account or some type of account that you can pull from to be able to sustain your your lifestyle, your cost of living. One place I used to hear that a lot was from Alux. If you haven't watched them on YouTube, A-L-U-X. I highly, highly recommend them. And they would also say that that is one way that you can measure whether or not you are poor, is that if you can have a minimum of three months but to six months worth of income in an account where you can be able to sustain your lifestyle without budgeting. Let me put emphasis on that. Without budgeting, your current lifestyle, if you are no longer getting any income coming in to be able to sustain that. So, a six-figure earner not being able to sustain one month of him continuing to support him and his girl, that's an issue, right? That's an issue. So, you might think, Hell, red flag, red flag for him. He dodged the bullet with her, but hell, she also dodged the bullet with him because he's not thinking right. He's not thinking right if he's not able to sustain them for a month earning six figures. What is he really doing with his money, right? Well, I can hear the arguments now. There'll be people saying, well, you know, it depends on where he lives. It depends on, you know, his, his home. It depends on his car. It depends on the level of expenses or well in that case like i said what are you doing with your money you should not be living equally to your means you should always be able to live below your means not above them not equal to them maybe he didn't choose the best location as far as you know where he's able to live or stay but there's so many things that factor into that there's so many things but it still doesn't change the fact that if he's earning six figures there are things that he could be doing with his money because we don't know to what degree of six figures that he's earning. It can be anywhere between a hundred thousand to nine hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. We don't know. Okay, so the other red flag with him is him not opening up and communicating about his depression. Now, when I first read this this text thread um, a few weeks back, that was one of the first things that popped in my head. When she said, huh, you're depressed? What, this, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. I'm like, damn, he hasn't communicated to his woman who he's been with for a few years that he's depressed? That's that's an issue. That is an issue. It also goes back to her. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, now you got this information. Now you are aware that he is depressed and is feeling some type of way. It still says a lot about you that you're not wanting to support him in his time of need. Let's take it back to her again, right? This is a clear shit test, right? It's very, very clear that this is a shit test. And surprisingly, she wasn't able to like see right through it. Now, I was talking to a friend of mine not too long ago about this whole incident because she feels indifferent about this. She doesn't agree with it entirely. And she was like, well, who shit test in a relationship? It's like, usually that's something you do before you get to the point where you're like, hey, we're gonna take each other serious. And hell, they live together. It's like, hey, before we move in together, <laughs> I've done all the shit testing that I needed to do with you, right? So she's kind of feeling like that. 
And I understand, I understand that. Even though I feel like to some degree people, male or female, will continue to shit test. Rather it's the dating stage, relationship, or marriage. I feel like people continue to do that. Not everybody. Like I said in my last video, I don't know if men too much do shit testing like that. At least I don't. I've never done it. I've always been big on communication because as human beings, we speak language, meaning that we have ability to communicate to a degree that is far greater than any other creature on this planet as far as we know of. Whales and dolphins might do it better, but look, we have language, multiple languages. Use your words, communicate. So her and I were kind of feeling the same way, but at the same time, feeling different. You know what I'm saying? I was like, look, I know women be shit testing like a mug. You ain't try to tell me otherwise. Just like I told you guys in the video earlier today, if I were to be with a woman, I would bring up situations and scenarios like this. Like I would show my girl this text thread and ask her how she felt about it. That's us communicating more so than just shit testing one another, right? So let's get back into some red flags that could come from both of these um, individuals within this thread. Now, another reason I can see this being a red flag for her and her potentially dodging a bullet from this man is the fact that he is so quick to want to leave his job, leave his career, even though it's not completely stated in this message. But l l hold on, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. This whole conversation being had through text is already horrible. Like, with all this back and forth that they were doing, somebody couldn't pick up the phone and finish the conversation? Like, they broke up over a text. Like, huh? No, I don't, I really don't think this is real. I really don't think this is real. But still, there's some stuff in here to be learned. But again, like I said, another red flag, a bullet that this woman could have potentially dodged is the fact that this man is so quick and so willing to leave this job just because she has landed a new job that isn't necessarily secured yet because you know it's a, there's a whole 90 day rule first three months we, we testing you out to see if you, you you really got this but you know this is a text you know so so maybe he didn't want to verbalize just how long or he was willing to let her be at this job before before he took a step back from his job to work on his mindset now another thing too let's go back to the very first page this was something i thought about the first time i read this and it was the fact that when she told him about the job that she landed making 70K a year, even though he said, yeah, that's amazing, instantly he took the joy and excitement out of it by saying, hey, look, I'm glad you got this job because now I wanna take a step away from my job so that I can focus on my mental health. Like, dang, bro, <laughs> I get that you're depressed, but you couldn't celebrate your woman in that time. And then you got to also think of it like this, maybe because of the, the state of mind that he's in, maybe because his depression may be that bad that he wasn't really thinking. Because I've been there. I've been depressed. And in that time, it was hard for me to celebrate other people's W's. Hell, because you got to think of it like this. In life, no matter how good we may try to do and how sensible and, and reasonable we can try to be as people and throughout life, there will come times where our judgment will be questioned. And this is one of those times. This is one of those times he couldn't celebrate her in her moment. And he had to turn this into this whole negative thing that could have really been avoided had there been some communication. It's almost equal, really, that they both dodged the bullet. <laughs> if this whole text is real, which I don't think it is, but it could be. If it's real, then yes, they both dodged the bullet. And it's like, this needed to happen. This needed to happen. Because <laughs> he can't communicate well enough. He's over here doing it through text message. And hell, she just as bad by feeding into this through text message and allowing a breakup to occur through text message. Look at this. So we done? Are you serious? At this point, somebody couldn't be like, hey, can we pick up this phone? Or hey, can we, you know, I'm gonna see you at home tonight. Can we talk about it there? All right, y'all, but yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. But man, this is the tough part about this channel. See, I am aware that there are multiple different ways that you can perceive 
any type of topic, any type of situation. And then there's always other conversations that you can have around stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, we were hyped. We were happy earlier seeing that, yo, man, look, he, he dodged the bullet. He dodged the bullet. But really, they both dodged bullets. They dodged one another. <laughs> hey, luckily for them, they'll no longer be together. But like I said, I don't even know if this is real or not. I don't even know if this is real or not. But anyway, I'm going to end this video right here. It's late. I don't know who all going to get to see this video. But um, yeah, I'll talk to y'all later. See ya.